just watch that ladder and that sleigh. Completely pointless. Works and why you should definitely consider hit. <coughs> Welcome back to another video and it's another sunny day in the UK and another solar install. Now, the fact that it's raining, it's dull and it's miserable isn't going to be a problem for this customer because they've gone for the REA Fusion 2 system that guarantees production all year round. And we've actually got Michael from REA all the way over from Australia. He's the owner of the company that produces these panels. He's come over today to come and see this property and to talk you through how his system works. Now this is a pretty impressive property with a pretty impressive array. It's a 30 panel array over about four different elevations and we've got a Tesla Powerwall too. Now we've not filmed a Tesla before, we've, fit, we've fitted lots of them but we've not actually filmed many of them. So what we're gonna do now take you to come look at the battery we're then going to jump on the roof we're going to run around the system michael's going to arrive we're going to talk about his panels and how they are the absolute best choice here for the systems in the uk and then we'll finish off talking to our engineer who's fitted the install Okay, so this is our battery and electrical insulation. Now, before we go on the roof, we thought we'd just take you through this, because um, this is pretty cool, because it's a Tesla. It's a Powerwall 2. Um, so obviously we fit lots of the Give Energy all-in-one systems. This is sort of the OG of battery systems, and it offers the same sort of performance. It's just a higher quality bit of kit. Let me run you through how it works. So this is the actual battery cell, and it's got the inverter built into it. So it's an AC coupled battery, 13.5 kilowatt hours with a five kilowatt transfer rate for charge and discharge. So how that, what, so what that means, sorry, is if you think about a battery like a bathtub full of water, that would be the capacity in kilowatt hours. And if you think about the inverter as the plug and the drain, so you've got charge and discharge, that's the inverter. So 13.5 and five kilowatt inverter. Now, interestingly on the Tesla, this inverter can actually spike to seven kilowatt for about 20 seconds. So if you get a higher load, maybe you've got like an induction hob um, or you've got a hot tub or whatever it is, it's going to give you a higher load. This inverter can spike up when that initial load kicks in. So that's our battery. They look super cool um, and they're stackable as well. So you can have multiple Teslas on one gateway. You can either have them side by side. We've done lots of them. We put some photos online or you can have them in front of each other. They look pretty cool as well because they light up when they're on. They've got like a green sort of power light when they're working. This is the Tesla gateway. So I'm going to come over here and take a look at it. So this normally goes next to your mains. The mains on this property is behind here. And what this does is give you full home backup. So your mains coming in from the grid are here and here. So you've got live and you've got neutral. So that's where your grid came into your house, it now goes into this. And then your home fuse board is also on this same buzz bar. <laughs> and that goes out to your home fuse board. So this is like an interruption to your main supply. Also wired into this is the battery, okay? So if, this, if the grid drops, let's say you have a, a grid event where the grid's gone off, bad weather, storm, or there's just a high load issue, this gateway will instantaneously click over and take you off grid. So it will divert power from the grid and take it from the battery and run your home and it'll power the home in that whole event and it's all contained within this ip rated unit it looks pretty cool it's got the tesla branding um, and it keeps the insulation really neat it keeps accessories and components down to a low number and obviously a great benefit of this is that it's under the same 10-year warranty that tesla offer you so you've not got any sort of third-party components that might cause any risk you can padlock this as well so if it's outside and you're worried that some you know kids are going to mess around with whatever it is padlockable and you can you can isolate it that way 
Just one more thing about the Tesla battery. When batteries get cold, they perform worse and some shut down. That is not the case with Tesla. This battery's actually got a heating element built into it and it's got a fan cooling system as well. So in this garage, it's probably not that relevant, but if your battery's outside and it goes below zero degrees, it'll stop charging and discharging. And with a Tesla unit, because it's got this heater built into it, it's gonna keep working. Other components in this install, Envoy for our REA solar system. So the actual ACMs on the roof, the modules all report back to this. This is the data communication feed. You've got your isolators here for your solar array. Obviously there's a 30 panel system this. What we've done on this install, not me, but what the guys have done is they've put a sub mains up in the loft area where all of the feeds for the PV come into and they run it down in AC here into this AC isolator. We've got our battery isolator and a completely pointless MCS regulatory generation meter, which is a total waste of money, but it's the regs. So that is our install. What we're going to do now is jump on the roof. We'll take you around the array and show you how we've laid it out and why we've done it. And we've also got Michael coming from REA all the way from Australia has come over to see some of our installs. He's going to talk you through why our panel is different how it performs in the UK and why you should only have it when you have solar installed for your home. Okay, so just to run you through this job um, and to give you an idea why it's been designed in the way it's been designed is what we try and do at Heatable is give sort of full day generation. To do that, the sun rises in the east and then sets in the west. So South is that way, so the sun in the morning is going to come up there and it's going to go around this property and it's going to set on the west elevation. Because it's a very steep pitch, obviously there's some challenges here around shading and making sure we get generation throughout the day. So what we've done, we've got two panels there and they're on the east elevation and then we're going to walk around here, Jack. So we've got one on the left hand side, I don't know if you can see it from there. Cool. You've got these five on the east here. We've got 10 on this southerly elevation here. Now when the sun is round facing these, they're going to pick up, they're going to pick up. We've also got two on the westerly elevation up here, so that's the opposite side to the original dormer. So that's going to get generation in the evening. We've placed these panels on the southerly elevation really high, so when the sun comes round in the evening, we should get some generation on those. If we come round here, just watch that ladder and that slate. Panel here, now again, on a DC system this would be really tricky because you've got one panel on its own. Um, you would have to string it up with the others, but if it got some shading from that dormer, it would knock it off, so you couldn't do that. That's why you need this REA system. So if you come around here, this is the west elevation, and we've got eight panels up here. So as the sun sets in the evening, these eight panels, plus the ones on the top, and we've got that westerly panel on the other side, they're gonna pick up the evening sun. So. What we'll get here is a really linear power curve on this property. You'll get generation first thing and you'll get generation right through to the end of the day. And obviously with these REA panels, even on days like today when it's really mixed weather, it's been pretty miserable this morning, this system is currently firing and is running this home, which you wouldn't get with a DC system. Just before we carry on with this video, please do remember to like and subscribe because it helps us produce more of these videos. Or if you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Anything just to get the algorithm pumping. So we're now on the roof and we've got Michael from REA Australia's come over to the UK. Come to have a chat about our partnership and also come around to see some of the installs. And this is the first one we're taking a look at. So. Like we said when we were down on the ground before, we've got a Tesla battery on this one and it's a 30 panel array. I suppose what we've got for Michael is some questions about the system, the design, how these panels work and how this is different from a DC system because yeah. in the UK, quite a lot of the systems are DC. Yeah. Probably, I think it's the same in Australia, is it? Definitely would be, would be majority DC. Right, cool, no worries. And the difference, so for people who are watching this video now, we talk a lot about AC, we talk yeah. a lot about AC modules, yeah. we talk a lot about your panel technology, but yeah. can you just break down the basics between yeah. DC and AC and yeah. why having this mm -hmm. 
is a better option than having DC. For sure. So the, the very first thing that we talk about and, and uh, is, is about the, the technology or topology of the, of the system. And uh, it's in simple terms, it is the world's only circuit protected system. So what that basically means is that um, it's like driving a car with airbags and seat belts or yeah. no airbags and no seat belts. Obviously many years ago we did drive cars without them, but yeah. for obvious reasons why now they're mandatory um, to, to have seat belts and airbags. So a lot of people don't understand that a DC system where we have panels on the roof down to a single inverter um, is not circuit protected. So what that basically means is that if, if anything is wrong with the house or if you have a tradesperson in the roof working on the home and you turn the main switch off or you pull the fuse in the street, everything in the house needs Needs to be completely off. Currently in the UK, solar is the only thing that you can install in the home and not require circuit protection. So you turn that switch off, everything on the, on the roof is still live all the way down to that inverter. And then what that has as a side effect is you get a yep. lot of high voltage yes. coming down those cables. Correct. And where that is also a safety concern, it's yep. also a concern for production. Yes. Because this system here, we've got 30 panels, yeah. but you've got east generation, east generation, yeah. we've got south generation, this will also pick up the south, and then we've got the west, west. generation yeah. for the evening. On a DC system, it wouldn't really be possible to lay this out like this would it, without affecting not at all. performance. Not at all. And in the UK, obviously, it's even more difficult to, to have the panels running at their optimum voltage. So if you have a, a panel that's roughly 40 volts, when you connect a second panel, you're 80 volts and, and, and so on and so yeah. on. So you need a minimum roughly of around about 200 volts to be able to optimize the, the system performance. Now, if you only have the space to do four panels on one face, you don't have enough voltage to ever run it at 100%. So heatable fit the REA system, mm. the AC module system in the UK, and we guarantee production 365 days a year. Yeah. Whereas on a DC system, mm. you couldn't do that. One panel operates at roughly 40 volts, yeah. but, but we can operate down to around 12 volts. So what that means is that days like today, every panel operating independently, um, they, they can still produce some energy um, and convert that into the home. When again, a conventional system needs a minimum amount of voltage just to operate. So in this sort of light for a DC system, those panels on that west side now, in the east side, so in the morning, yeah they're not gonna fire. No. Whereas this system is well, now producing energy. What we noticed, because we've got some DC systems on the system, really bad days, the DC systems don't turn on. Yeah. The AC systems, your system does turn on, but when the DC systems are on, yours turns on earlier and then yeah stays on for about 40 minutes longer. Yeah. Is that just um, the panel efficiency yeah. or wh why would it stay on? So, so essentially there's a few things within the, the system. The first is obviously the technology where, where we, it operates at what we call individual maximum power point tracking. So again, the inverter tracks the whole system together. We track every panel independently. So we have a, a, a bigger window or operating window within the micro inverter to be able to convert the energy. Um, the second thing is, is the bifacial panel so we have a we have a clear glass um, bifacial module which means that we're activating the cells on the front and on the back so we're getting that refractive and oblique light to again keep the voltage as high as possible keep the micro inverter underneath on as long as possible generate more energy so when people think about bifacial panels they think about a very binary through through the clear section and, and back to yeah. back it's not it's the power of the of the, or the radiation traveling through the sets of cells correct that's collecting it it's about the right. it's it's like having more sticky surfaces um, to be able to um, activate those electrons um, through photosynthesis and, and for us to be able to do that as much as possible um, increases the overall system performance. So, so in Australia where we have almost perfect weather uh, we, we generally see between 25 and 30 percent more performance wow. on, on the identical faces. Every single panel that comes out of the factory um, is, is differently rated so most other manufacturers have a plus or minus three percent power tolerance. It can be plus or minus 3% of that panel rating. Uh, right, okay. We're only plus percent. So if you have 10 panels, you might have three or four panels that are overperforming, but in a conventional system, it operates at the lowest performing panel. So if you have overperforming panels, if you have, like in Australia, the center panels will operate hotter, which means we have a reduction in the performance, it will drag the whole system down. When with the AC system or the REA system, you get to get the maximum efficiency or, or performance capability 
durability of every panel independently because they're all added up together. Thunder panel would overheat and yes. then the, the, the coefficients would drop. But because they're all connected in series, the inverter, um, what, inverter's maximum power point tracker needs to take the lowest panel and add them all up at that lowest panel's rating. When we, we don't, we can have super performing panels and, and panels that are, are performing just above average um, and they can all be added up. Yeah, we sort of market it like, um Every panel is its own power plant. It is. It's a panel and an inverter in one. They're, yeah. they're, they come as a unit. Yeah. And that unit is fully independent of the rest of the system. So yes. on here now, if this one was clipping some shade or south, when the sun is coming south now, yeah. this, this dormer here is going to mm. cover this first panel. Yeah. It's not going to drag down the rest of the array. That's right. So that's 25 years it's warranted for. So when you're making an investment and you look and say, well, you've got all these ancillary costs are part of your job. If someone's doing it properly, obviously, it will do a high standard of service and we have a high quality job. So um, every job should look like this if you're using someone else. But these costs are still here, whether you're using a cheap DC panel and a cheap inverter than it yeah. is to use a premium bit of kit and have the performance. And on a yeah. day like today, where we've just granted the sun's just come out for a moment, but it's pretty much miserable everywhere else, yeah. your DC system's not turning on. No. This is producing power and currently running the home. No single point of failure. So what that means is if, if there is a panel issue, say to um, birds pooing on a panel or something like that, um, then it, it, it's not going to affect the performance of the system. If there's an issue with the battery, if there's an issue with a, a microinverter, again, that only affects that one panel. With a conventional system, you're producing nothing. So if you're generating, say, 20 kilowatt hours per day, um, our system, if one panel goes down, might be producing 19 kilowatt hours. You wouldn't even notice it. With a conventional system, you're going to produce zero. Every single day, that system's down. When we look at statistics globally, um, the average failure rate of an inverter is is actually every quarter, every three months. And, and the reason being is because people don't realize it's off until they get their big power bill. Now, if that happens once in 25 years and the statistics show it happens every day, all of a sudden that extra savings you think you saved up front are gone. And that's once. So if that happens more than once a year, um, the, the systems are more expensive. Yeah, it's a, bit, it's a big issue as well, isn't it, with trying to find the problem. So if, yeah. if on your system, if that panel failed, yeah. on the app it flashed up and say, well, this panel's down, it's got an X for it, it goes black, I think, doesn't it, on, yeah. the, on the app. On a DC system now, you would be here putting all this scaffolding up yep. and going, right, we've got to test every single panel. You've essentially got to un uninstall the whole system. And the thing is, is that the, the, the panel manufacturer won't pay you to do that. So the yeah. homeowner is responsible for paying those costs for identifying the problem. Once the problem is identified, then they should it should be covered under warranty if you can prove it as well. So what we have found in experience with other panel manufacturers is that they require the data from day one to be able to benchmark how the panel performed. We can provide that data in five minute increments from day one to 25 years or whatever. Um, so we can prove if and when the, the performance of yeah the performance of the system failed. So but on a DC system, all you would see is a steady decline, and then it would eventually go off. You would never know the yeah. reason it's failed yeah. and which one has failed. So I think there's yeah. multiple benefits. That's why we're so bought into it as a technology. Um, really appreciate you coming down. It's great. Yeah. Obviously, we've got a couple of meetings later on and stuff, but we just thought we'd take you to this job. It's an interesting job. We're going to walk around now, probably finish off filming the battery. We'll take yeah. a look at the app once it's live and then we'll, uh, we'll catch them there. Sounds good. All right. Hi, right, I'm Jess from JQ Limited. Um, we've been fitting solar panels for the best part of two years now. We've, um, we've been onboarded with Heatable for about six months, I'd say. Um, it's been great working with them. We've fitted numerous amounts of different systems for them. I mean, they're a great company to work with. Everyone in the office really helpful. So this installation is a, I think Ben's talked you through, we've got a Tesla 13 and a half kilowatt battery with the gateway. M phase, 30, 420 watt REA panels on the roof with micro inverters. I really like these panels, the efficiency, because they're 20%, they're the bifacial ones, so they're 20% more efficient. So for every fifth panel in theory, you're getting a sixth one for free. But yeah, they're really good to install, really simple. Um, the micro inverter system is just a plug and play system on the AC inverter. So we hope you enjoyed that video. It might have been a bit long because Michael wanted to tell you all the features of his panel. If you've got any questions for Heatable or Michael from REA, then leave a comment below.
And obviously, if you're in the market for solar or you want to get a quote to see how much it's going to cost and how much it could save, then go over to heatable.co.uk and we'll be able to give you a fixed online price.